everyone who's celebrating uh, this special month. I'd like to congratulate the organisers and the chair for getting so many MPs with various different political views all agreeing with each other. That's a remarkable achievement, first and foremost, and that is an achievement we should take forward because this is a cross-party issue. You've got Labour MPs, Scottish Nationalist MPs and uh, Conservative MPs like myself all agreeing about what we need to do. And I just want to be a little bit positive because I think awareness of what's going on in Indian occupied Kashmir and Jammu is higher now in the UK than perhaps ever before. It's certainly higher in political circles than it's ever before. And the, 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 it has been a political issue quite recently and I won't dwell on why that is, but I think that's also been a positive thing because again, that has kind of focused minds and people are beginning to talk about it because my inbox uh, and my post bag on this issue is higher uh, that now than it's ever been before. Um, you mentioned, Mr. President, in your kind of remarks about the need for a debate on Kashmir and the, the prospect of that. Well, uh, I'm pleased to tell you that that was actually something that was planned, uh, but one, once we've begun virtual, uh, it's been uh, postponed. But I know there is determination amongst all of us here to make sure that that debate happens again as soon as possible, because there are two, two or three things I think we all need to do. Uh, for us as par parliamentarians, we need to do the soft lobbying with our, within our own parties, with our own parties to try and change attitudes of our, of our front benches uh, and ministers on this. And we need hard lobbying too, uh, through debate, through questions, etc. And we have to make this a political issue, I think, not a party political issue, but a political issue. And to do that, uh, we need to change, as I said, mindsets within the government, the Labour front bench and all uh, of our parties. And we need to do that by using the sizable Kashmiri diaspora uh, and make sure that they're vocal uh, on, on this issue. Uh, they are, which is a good thing, but we need to make sure that that continues. Because we've all heard of the violence, we've all heard of political oppression, and we've all heard about repressive laws. We've even all heard about murder. But Mr. President, what would be helpful from you, I think, is when we do have this debate in Parliament, working with yourself and, and others, we, I think would be very helpful is to have dates, names, and details as much as you can of the oppression and incidents that have happened there. Because we've all seen the videos, we've all seen evidence of this, we've all watched the images. And every time these are put forward, those images, those videos, etc., they are questioned by obviously supporters of the Indian government. Insofar as we can, we need to make sure that these, these, this evidence is beyond question. And when we do that, it, I know it's difficult, but if we are able to do that, it would make our argument so much more stronger. And finally, I also think that we have something which is really, really achievable here. We have to be realistic about what we can achieve, but there's a few things. The revocation of Article 35 and 350, we need to make sure that that becomes a a political issue beyond just the UK. It needs to become something that any right-minded person in the world who believes in democracy and human rights would uh, would support the, the re-establishment of those articles. And then the, the bit we've been talking about earlier, about this being a tripartite issue, uh, the it, feelings, the wishes of the people of Kashmir and Jammu need to be taken into account when uh, the future of Kashmir and Jammu have discussed, because that is not the situation at the moment. The United Kingdom, when it's had its own territorial disputes and its own issues, would always insist upon the wishes of the people of that territory or that area to be taken into account. And the people of Kashmir and Jammu deserve no less. I feel this is achievable. I feel positive about the parliamentarians, Mr. President, you have on your side now uh, on, on this issue. I think we can make real progress and um, working together, I know we can do that. A question uh, that's on sent in. Um, it's from a prominent medical doctor, Shafat, who works in a London hospital working against COVID-19. He's from the Indian uh, occupied Jammu and Kashmir and one of the many victims of the Indian occupation. So he sent this uh, following question for Paul Bristow, MP for Peterborough. Uh, and he says, the Kashmiri diaspora in Britain is grateful to our parliamentarians for sparing time and participating in this teleconference. 
People in Kashmir are victims of the worst kind of state terrorism. The very institutions which are supposed to protect them, the police, the army, the civil administration, are resorting to bar barbaric acts to silence them. New Delhi is pushing the youth to the wall where they see no hope for justice. Uh, so his question to uh, Paul is, what can our parliamentarians do to restore the faith of the people in the international laws of justice and human values so that they can carry on peacefully and not fall into the trap of the occupation and resort to violence means because their screams are not being, uh, sorry, their screams are being ignored by the international community. Um, okay, thank, thank, thanks Ishii. Uh, I mean, I can only answer from my personal viewpoint. I, I think in this conflict, our side of the argument now, the idea that human rights needs to be, human rights need to be respected, that self-determination is key. I think we have the moral high ground. I think for the first time, there's a real opportunity here in this country that this issue becomes more and more high profile. And one thing that I think was incredibly important was the trip that all parliamentarians of all parties, and it's absolutely crucial this, that it's all parties, this is not a party political issue. I just want to make that absolutely clear. We've got numbers of Conservative MPs on here, we've got numbers of Labour MPs and uh, an MP from the Scottish Nationalist Party. This is not a party political issue. But what was really crucial was that trip recently to Kashmir by some of my colleagues who went there to the line of control, who went there and spoke very publicly about what was going on there and shone a light on the atrocities that are going on. And if that continues, I would hope that those young people in Kashmir and Jammu can see that people from this country, parliamentarians from this country at the very least, are not going to allow those sorts of abuses to continue without condemnation and without shining a spotlight on those issues. If this happened on, in any other country, many other parts of the world, this would be, have a higher profile than it does at the moment. And something that Richard said earlier was absolutely true, that this country has a unique role to play in shining a spotlight on this, considering our history and the diasporas that live in this country. I am more positive and more optimistic about our prospects on this issue than ever before. You might find that strange me saying that, when we do have an oppressive government in India, a religious nationalist government in India, who are advancing these atrocities, but awareness, as I keep saying, in this country of that, and of that, this prospect of this becoming a political issue, not a party political issue, I'm gonna keep making that point, a political issue is higher than it ever is before. And with all of my colleagues from across party, um, all my colleagues from other parties and my own party here, I know that we're gonna to continue to campaign on this, and this is just the beginning. So Your, excell uh, Your Excellency, uh, and the person who asked the question, I would like to try and ensure that you leave this meeting with a degree of positivity, a degree of optimism. We are by your side and we will not allow the human rights abuses and the terrible things that have gone on in Indian occupied Kashmir and Jammu to continue without shining that spotlight on it. Thank you very much.